And so, uh, the point is that our Prophet was indeed gifted Maria. Maria was not our mother. She's not of the Ummahat al Mu'minin. She, so we do not view her as being of the Ummahat al Mu'minin. She was Milk Yameen. She remained Milk Yameen. And she was never a Zawja. And if she had become a Zawja, she would be of the Ummahat al Mu'minin. And so uh, our Prophet uh, was gifted Maria. And of course, we know that uh, Maria gave birth to. Uh, the son of our Prophet ﷺ, and that is uh, Ibrahim. And uh, there's one story that is also mentioned about Maria. And again, I mean, I've already mentioned to you a big issue about the whole issue of Maria, but I would rather you hear these things from me again, rather than you hear about them from some other uh, website or other person, then, you know, this causes doubts. And again, wallahi, I'll be honest with you, if we lived in a different time and different place, not everything needs to be mentioned. You know, it's not, you just, okay, some things are healthy, some things, there's no need to, sh you know, put the spotlight on them. But I feel very strongly from my own experiences, in the time and place we live in, it is better that we talk about this in a frank manner, because we don't want our youth. Wallahi, even last week I got a call, you know, from one of our uh, youngsters, he had literally... He had told me he is not a Muslim anymore. But his parents wanted me to talk to him and whatnot. Yeah, he's a murtad. And he said this, I don't believe anymore. And he's quoting a number of things from the seerah. From the seerah. And these are things that are mentioned in the books. It's not something that, you know, uh, it's not, no, where did he hear about it from? Not from me. Not from, where did he hear, who, what do you think? Well, in particular. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know. So he heard it from Islamophobes. He heard it from people that have this agenda. And he's logged onto their websites. And they put all of these narrations, one from this year, one from that year. And they ignore, you know, so many other stories that are just amazing. That are, form the character of the Prophet And they concentrate on these two, three, four. And sometimes they'll bring a little bit exaggeration. But they're not lying. And that's the point. They understand now it's too, you can't lie anymore. They quote directly from, you know, At-Tabarani or Ibn Ishaq or whatever. And they bring five, ten incidents. And, you know, this young kid said, I just can't believe that this is a, you know. And this is what he said. So, you know, I'm telling you in all honesty, if we lived in a different time and place, Wallahi, let's just move on. But we don't. I would rather we talk about it and clarify so that we understand. And then, uh, you know, uh, whoever wants to then have a different position or whatnot, our job is to convey the message. It's up to them to believe what they want. So, and of course, this is not, it's scandalous for Maria, but not for our Prophet Sallallahu And that is that uh, Maria was not a Muslim at the time. And she is, of course, coming to a strange land. And she probably does not speak the language of Arabic. And so... Uh, one can kind of understand that, you know, she's all alone in a strange land. So rumors began to spread that the servant that was gifted along with Maria, his name was Ma'bur, uh, was visiting Maria. Okay, so rumors began to spread of this nature. And you understand what these rumors entail. Uh, and so uh, some reports also mention that this servant, Ma'bur, was a relative, like a distant cousin or something, of Maria, uh, which would also then, you know, make it uh, like they have some connection from back as well. And so, uh, and this hadith is reported in Sahih Muslim, by the way. So it's clearly, it's not something in some obscure, uh, the hadith I'm going to mention. It's not some obscure book. It's mentioned in pr pretty much every single book, uh, you know, uh, of the Sunan and whatnot. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam commanded Ali ibn Abi Talib to take his sword and find Ma'bur. I.e. deal with the man. Find this person Ma'bur. And of course Ali is assigned radiallahu anhu these tasks because anything to do with the personal family of the Prophet it's Ali. Okay? So anything to do with the personal family of the Prophet Ali is the man that is chosen because he is Al al Bayt. He is a part of the family of the Prophet. So Ali took the sword and he said, asked a very intelligent question. He said, O Messenger of Allah, should I go as uh, a, a silent uh, person who just obeys the command? Or should I go as somebody who hears and sees what the person absent will not hear and see? Meaning, do you want me to investigate or do you want me to just do? What do you want? So he asked an intelligent question. And so the Prophet said, no, go as somebody who hears and sees, i.e. find out. 
you do investigation. And this, by the way, I'll just jump the gun here. So because of this phrase, Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn Hazm and others, they say that the Prophet ﷺ was not sending Ali to execute Ma'pur. He was sending him to frighten him and to find out. And the other position, which is the position also found, is that he was being sent to execute Ma'bur. So this is a bit of a controversy because you have fiqhi points, fiqhi ramifications based upon this. Do you understand the fiqhi ramifications? The main fiqhi ramification, Ma'bur was not given a trial. Evidence was not presented. Two witnesses were not found. And Ali is being told, here's the knife, go do it. Okay. So one opinion says that the Prophet ﷺ had this right. Of course, they all say nobody else has this right. I mean, understood. I mean, that's clearly, maybe I should mention it. You know, that's something for the Prophet ﷺ. But the other opinion, which is Ibn Qayyim and Ibn Hazm and others, they say, no, this is not judge, jury, and executioner. This is the Prophet ﷺ sending Ali to, in, you know, basically frighten and interrogate. And that's why he tells Ali, use your ears and eyes. Figure out what's happening. And so, Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, goes and finds Ma'bur. According to one report, he was in a uh, uh, he was in a date grove collecting dates or uh, perhaps um, getting water. And when Ma'bur saw him, he became terrified. And there's again multiple reports over here. Uh, one report mentions that uh, he attempted to climb up a tree but then fell down. Another report mentions that he intentionally exposed his aura. In either case, his aura was exposed. In either case, what happened? Either he fell down or he intentionally exposed it. And lo and behold, uh, it was obvious that he had been uh, castrated. In fact, castration is not the word. He had been, uh, how shall we put this? Mutilated. That's the best way we can say this, right? He did not have uh, the organ that a man has. Uh, so, of course, this is what some of the civilizations did to slaves. Of course, in our tradition, this is always prohibited. You cannot do this ever, ever. It's never allowed to do this. Even to a legitimate slave, you cannot do this. But, of course, other civilizations didn't have that rule. So, uh, it was then clear to Ali that the rumors can't be true. That he doesn't even have this. So uh, he then returned to the Prophet and informed him that basically uh, this is not something that uh, is uh, the case. And as I said, um, Ibn al-Qayyim and others have mentioned that this is something to frighten him and not as, a, as an executioner. Uh, in any case, so that issue was resolved.